You know what's better than a rebound? A bow bound. To a, a mo bound. A, to you know. a bound. A bound. An abound. I like to abound. In abound life. is better. Today we're than talking rebound. about how to abound. In you didn't life. miss the shot. You're bounded. You're bounded. We're gonna I become aboundinators today. We'll be right back. Aboundinators. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> All right, welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. It's good to have you with us today. You are looking fabulous. We're praying that you have an epic day today. And if you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We'd like to read that on Wednesdays. And put down in the comments your favorite comedy of all times. Woo! Oh, oh nice. Yeah, put them down like in there. Have fun movie with... or TV show or just anything? I would say movie. Let's do movie. TV favorite. shows are like, what's your favorite comedy or funniest, TV show? Funniest movie. I like that. Yeah, mine's still Dumb and Dumber, I think, is still my number one. I mean, Liar Liar is very strong. Cable Guy, though many people don't think it's fun, I think he's one of my favorites. Yeah. Those are kind well, of... We just watched Cable Guy the other night. It's a very dark movie. <laughs> it's very dark. It is very dark. It's a, it's a sleeper. I mean, it gets like 33% on the reviews. People mm. don't like it. Master of Disguise. Oh, one my, my gosh. Fa- my family is one of their that favorites. That gets like 10% on the reviews. It's like the worst movie it's ever, the low, it's It's so rated the, the worst comedy of all time. No, you got to watch Master of Disguise if you have it. Get your whole family together. Be in a goofy mood and have fun. Okay, man. So today we're talking about how to, in a sense, abound. Right? And we need to because the enemy likes to work in our places of lack in our life and convince us to get our needs met out here somehow, which leads to dis- destruction in our lives mm. when... We, you know, we lean into this, trying to find peace. We find ourselves on pills. We're trying to medicate our pain, you know, and these things are destroying our body and messing with our lives. And then you end up addicted to things. And this is not God's plan for you. And you find that people convince themselves that they, they lack finances, but, and the devil convinces them that so they cannot give, which can be and the conduit, which is the conduit of being blessed. It's the conduit. I thought it was it. amazing. So we're in Gulu, Africa, me and Jason were, right? And, um, this church of people, they they ride. Sometimes there was a family of four people on, you know, those little 80s scooters? The little moped guy. The little moped things that you have to pedal to get going. Yeah, There's an entire family on one of them. Yeah. And then sure. you have a lot of people that talk about that. Like, they walk like 10 miles, they 15 miles. They just walk. They don't have a moped. Church. Yeah. To church. To they church. They walk for hours to church. And then and then when it gets time for the offering, oh, they bring yeah. out this little jar. Like actually, it's a really big jar. No, no, no. It was a. It was a. Remember, I got a picture of it. I should find it for for you. It was. The, it was the most incredible thing. It was this wicker basket. It was, it was like this wasn't big. it? It was the biggest wicker basket. They bring it up front, and people run to it. They bring it up front, and pe- the people run to give. These people have, n- compared to America, nothing. Yet they're excited to give. And I think God loves a cheerful giver. He does. And they were excited. They're all woo, 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 and they ran up. And I'm like, that's expectation. Like the pastor's like, that's we're going to fill that. It's amazing. Anyway, it's amazing to see. It's inspiring. And God, so second Corinthians nine, eight says this, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all th- things at all times, you having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Another translation says can give on all good given to every good work. Yeah. So right. God's plan is I want you to have too much so that when a need arises, you can give not out of your lack, but you give out of your abundance. So financially speaking, this whole entire passage is about them raising money for the poor in Jerusalem. Right. There was a problem happening. And so all these different churches were, were taking up offerings and sending the money with Paul towards this need in Jerusalem, the poor. And out of this, Paul says this. He says, those who sow generously will also reap generously, but those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. And so he's telling you that when you give in this offering, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna tap into this idea of abundance that God wants to bless you abundantly, so that you can always give. That's the thing is we want to give, but things come along in our lives that sometimes we can't give, right? Or we can't give as much as we want to. God wants to bring you into an abundance so that you can always give and abound to every good work that it's easy for you to give. That it's, it's not a problem, it's not a pain. It's, you're, you're not in lack, but you have an abundance. You're blessed to be a blessing. And God's plan is, is to shift the wealth into the hands of the believers that have a desire to give, because he gives seed to the sower. So those that have a heart of giving, God wants to transfer, right? Because he knows that you're not gonna hold on to it. 
but instead you're a conduit to make a difference in the world. And Satan works so hard to keep us poor. Oh my God. Which voice do you he think? Wants to, he wants the church to be poor. He wants people to be mad if the church mm -hmm. isn't poor. If they're not giving. He wants people to be mad giving. if the Christians aren't poor. He wants people to be mad if the pastor's not poor. Everybody's supposed to be poor in Christianity. In, in Satan's world, that's a good thing because then we can't touch the world. Right. You can't help the poor if you are the poor. You can't help the marginalized or the people who have been forgotten or the, the people who have been underserved in your community if you, if you have nothing. Right. So God's trying to get us out of our bubble of lack and poverty and get us into abundance. But the enemy works so hard to keep us poor. Well, I mean, if you really just thought about it. So the Bible talks about testing the voices that you hear. So you tell me, which voice makes sense would want you not to give your tithes and offering? What voice would be that? Do you think that's God's voice <laughs> that goes, whoa, hold on, hold on, right? Let me. The church wants really. They want. They want money. They want your tithes and your offering. Do you think that's God's voice, or do you think that's maybe, well, and, Satan? And people do say that. Well, but the you know churches are just all about the money. No, they're all about teaching the word of God. Yes. And they're not going to compromise God's word by by not talking about. How when you give, you give more. It's like God's not looking at the Bible and saying, well, we better leave that out because we're going to offend people. <laughs> God's like, no, this is a this yes. is a key. So I'm going to put this in my eternal word of God that when they give, I'm going to give more. And then the pastor gets up and preaches it and people get offended by that word. Here's the question. What do you think is the most impactful uh, building place put into any community? A like, is, is it a bigger uh stadium no it's the church is it uh, a bigger a bigger walmart how about walmart when they come up so no they, actually the church it's proven sociologically times. by what's called the halo effect that a church changes a community better and more efficiently than any other uh, entity what's the best investment church. god's house god's house it's a hundred so walmart adds eight dollars uh to the community for every one dollar a church adds one hundred dollars for every one dollar so a benefit the benefit to the community so what this voice? is called the halo effect you can google, yeah, google, google this research it was done by the uh barnes group barna 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 and we know the we grew up with the kid that's running it yeah kinnaman yeah kinnaman good yeah. guy yeah he was an amazing guy yeah he's, he's a few years younger than me i think yeah and was he your age he's my age yeah that's cool he's that's, my grade that is amazing uh yeah it's it, crazy this is, so anyway you just have to test the voice. What voice, right, doesn't want you to go to church, Jason? Yeah. Right? Well, the enemy. Well, you know, you know, church is where you're at. Yeah. God's voice doesn't want you to go gather. Well, there's a big there's a big push right now among people that don't like church. They're mad at churches because they say they teach the cotton candy word of God. They <laughs> teach like the just the Stories. blessings and the and the good things and they never teach the hard things. Mm -hmm. But that's funny because when a church teaches teaches on giving or tithing, it, <laughs> the hard thing, the same people that want them to not compromise on the word of God suddenly want them to compromise on that one. On that one, I don't want you talking about tithing or giving. Now you just want my money. No, we have to teach the entire word of God. The entire Passover lamb had to be eaten. You can't leave parts of Jesus out just because you don't want to hurt people's feelings or or drive people. You know, the, you have to teach the truth. One of my, one of my strengths is is my storytelling, and so every sermon I, I try to put a story and captivate with it. And I You're had, amazing at stories. But I had I had a, a lady message me on Facebook, and she's like, um, "Why, you know, why stories? You know, why can't you just teach the word of God?" And then I just message back. I go, "Well, if you go through and watch Jesus' sermons, most every sermon that he did." Had a story. <laughs> it was just a story, yeah. There was he, a man he taught, that had a, he taught through had parables an orchard and stories. There was a farmer. There was this one guy. Dude, this, I wonder. If, I wonder his if the father, and the religious at the time, goes, yeah, yeah, he's just about cotton candy and the word of God. He's talking about a couple farmers. Well, I like this one. People really criticize some pastors for not quoting the Bible enough, like or referencing scripture. They don't <laughs> reference enough scripture. But Jesus didn't Jesus say. Jesus never referenced the scripture. He never said Deuteronomy, you know, it says this. Or, hey, open up your he Bible. He spoke the scripture, but he yes. never referenced it. That's so he, powerful. You know, and neither did Paul, and neither did Peter, and neither did James. And Because it's a loud, divisive voice. That's all it is. You're being used to divide. The to... exegesis one right now. If you're not teaching exegesis style, then you're not teaching the word of God. What is it? And I go, I go, but Paul never taught exegesis style. Neither did Peter. What's exegesis style? James never taught. That's where you just simply read the word of God straight through. <laughs> you can do that on your own. 
there's a big movement right now that says that any any church is not doing that. It's not the truth. Yeah, because there's a divisive tool. Of but the then enemy. you look at the Word of God and you look at how these guys taught and you study how they taught. Yes, they they went and got revelation from the Lord and pieced it together into something beautiful. Yes. Anyway, we we <laughs> we encourage you to partner with us. Uh, we want to get this message out there. You know that that this is a life changing message. Eight dollars a week, thirty four dollars a month uh, allows us to really push this message out there. Yeah. Uh, let's pray, dear Father, Lord. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that we want that, Lord. Your desire for us is to abound, and we know that the conduit is that is being and having a heart of giving, Lord. As we go through our life, go through our week and our day, looking for opportunities not to take, but looking for opportunities to give that out of our abundance we can give for every good work. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The key to abundance is giving. Birthdays. Happy birthdays. John Michael, happy birthday. Chelsea, happy birthday. Brianna Mitchell, happy birthday. Twins, Addie and Brooklyn. Oh, wow, they both have the same birthday. That's so weird. I wonder, what are the odds that your twins would have the same birthday? Anaya, April 17th, happy birthday. Nathan, April 20th. Stephen, April 12th. April Tom Johnson. Wait, it's not, it's, I read that funny. Stephen, April 12th. Happy Tom birthday. Johnson, April 15th. <laughs> That's how I read it. I made April a last name. Uh, yo, mama joke Thursday. Your mama's so sweet when she cries, her tears are made of honey. That's actually That's a good really one. Nice. That's so sweet. <laughs> it made me happy. Your mama's so chill, she makes penguins feel warm. Your mama's so bright, her ideas light up a room. These are very not bad. Like they're uplifting. <laughs> these are nice. Jesus. If Jesus did you mama jokes, these are what they'd be. Your mom is so caring, even her plants have never felt alone. <laughs> These are Jesus, your mama jokes. They are. They're very nice. They weren't funny, though. Because <laughs> it's only funny when you, when you, make, funny fun when you make fun of the mom. Yeah. Your mom is so uh, heavy, she fell off the curb and her leg broke and gravy poured out. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. You know, but once again, mean. it goes along with that, the revel- I got that from a movie. I can't remember the movie. It was uh, uh, with uh, Eddie Murphy when he was the uh, professor. Oh, yeah. Was it? Professor Klump. Yeah, uh, it goes along with what I, I say that that the the loudest voices are the voices that go against the word, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So making fun of your mom is funnier than being nice to your mom. Oh, we should be nice. No, I like being funny. Okay, <laughs> watch this. I'm way. down. I'm easily persuadable. Jesus is the door to so much more in 2024. That's how we got to roll, man. Your cup runs over. Now let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 and following. And let me just break this down to you. How many of you know that Jesus came to earth for a reason? How many of you know that he was carrying something when God sent him to the planet? They weren't just sitting around, you know, having lattes and scones one day. And and God goes, you just need to go down there. There was something that Jesus was carrying. There was a reason why he came. So the Bible says that he who descended is himself also he who ascended far above all heavens. Now look at me. How many of you know that Jesus descended with a purpose and God would have never allowed him to ascend if the reason for the descend wasn't fulfilled? So the purpose for the descend must have happened because he ascended. God sent him to do something, and then he brought him back after what the something to do got done. So how many of you know that the cross was a success? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, be in church this weekend, wherever that's at. And give us one of these. Give us one of these. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.